Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about another way to represent vectors. We've talked about representing three-dimensional vectors using x, y, and z components, but this time we're going to use i, j, and k notation as another way for us to represent these vectors in three dimensions. Here you're noticing that I have this hat notation on the i, j, and k, so we actually have i hat, j hat, and k hat. This caret, or the hat symbol, that is above the letter is just another notation to represent a vector. So this is like an i vector, a j vector, and a k vector. It's an alternative to the arrow symbol. But we use the hat specifically with this type of notation, and it's just to help us distinguish these specific i, j, and k vectors from just any old vector. So the hat helps us distinguish these special vectors. So the way we state this formally is that the vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat together form a standard basis for R3. So that word standard basis comes up in other situations in math, but you should just think of it as sort of our building blocks for R3. And this happens because of how i, j, and k are defined. We define i hat to be the vector 1, 0, 0. So in standard position, this is a vector starting at the origin and pointing to the point 1, 0, 0. So it points directly along the x-axis for a length of 1. Then the j vector is 0, 1, 0, and it lies directly on the y-axis. Again, having a length of 1, it starts at the origin and goes to the point 0, 1, 0. And lastly, the k vector goes 0, 0, 1, and it lies along the z-axis, going straight up for a length of 1. So the idea is that the i hat vector represents the x movement one step at a time, and the j vector represents one movement in the y direction, and the k vector represents one movement in the z direction. So using these three vectors, i, j, and k, we can create any sort of movement we want because we can add them, subtract them, scale them in any way to get any movement. So that's why they're called together as a standard basis because they let us create anything we might want in our three dimensions. Individually, we call these vectors standard unit vectors. This is because they have a magnitude or a length of one. And just to summarize, the purpose here is that any vector in R3 can be represented using these three vectors, i hat, j hat, and k hat. So i represents the x component, j represents the y, and k represents the z. So these three together will give us the x, y, and z components for any vector in three dimensions. As a note, if we are just working in two dimensions, we only need to use i hat and j hat. So i hat and j hat actually make a standard basis for R2. Just a comment. So the whole reason we have these standard unit vectors is that it allows us to write the vector a, b, and c as a sum. So we could write the vector a, b, c as a times i hat plus b times j hat plus c times k hat. Breaking it up in this way has a lot of applications and is often really helpful, so we just like having a way to decompose vectors into these standard unit vectors. To show why this works, let's try a times i hat, 1, 0, 0, plus b times j hat, 0, 1, 0, plus c times k hat, 0, 0, 1. Then we distribute those constants, those numbers out front, the scalars, so we get a, 0, 0, plus 0, b, 0, plus 0, 0, c. And so now we can combine these together. The only x component is a, so a plus 0 plus 0 is a. Then we get b for the y and c for the z. So by writing a times i hat plus b times j hat plus c times k hat, we're getting that vector a, b, and c. Then as a note, we could do this for two dimensions, so the vector a, b would be a times i hat plus b times j hat. Okay, so mostly I just want you to have seen this notation so that if it comes up, you know what it's talking about and you know how to convert between the two. 
So let's try an example where we look at some vectors and represent them using i hat, j hat, and k hat notation. So let's represent 4, negative 7, and negative 2, 1, 3 using i hat, j hat, and k hat notation. So because this doesn't take too much work or writing out, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So we take 4, that's the a component, times i, so 4 i hat, and then we will do minus 7 j hat. So we just take those two t components and put them in front of the i and the j respectively. So you can think the x component goes with i, the y component goes with j. So for the three-dimensional vector, negative 2, 1, 3, I can write this using i, j, k notation as negative 2 i hat plus j hat plus 3 k hat. So you're seeing that the components for x, y, and z correspond to i, j, and k, the coefficients in front of those, and we get negative 2 i hat plus j hat plus 3 k hat. All right, that's just a little introduction into this new type of notation, just in case you see it in the future, and to give us another way to talk about vectors moving forward. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.